On 30th May 2003, he landed at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and was received with pomp and color before being driven here to the Panafric Hotel, where he would become a center of attraction and controversy for the next few days before one morning he was silently whisked away back to Ethiopia. General Madenge, that never was the untold story. Sights and sounds that gripped the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport on 30th May 2003, when an 84-year-old man landed in Nairobi. The man from Ethiopia had been flown into Kenya by the state. It was reported that he was the long-lost freedom fighter, a Mau Mau hero, General Stanley Madenge. The man was a special guest of the state on that year's June 1st Madaraka Day celebrations for the newly installed NAC administration. It would later be discovered that wasn't the case. The man was an Ethiopian peasant farmer known as Ato Lema Ayanu. The incident turned out to be a fiasco. President Mwai Kibaki's five-month administration had been duped. The saga made headlines both locally and internationally. The Economist published, and I quote, Women ululated, dancers gyrated, and a member of Kenya's parliament declared the greatest day for this country since independence. General Stanley Madenge, a lost legendary nationalist, had finally returned home. Or had he? That member of parliament was Michael Koegi Wamwere. <laughs> yes, by the way, I was not an insider into the effort of getting Madenge back from Ethiopia. I did not even know anything about it at all. I was to read about it in the newspapers, um, but as I said, I welcomed it. Uh, and I was, I mean, I, it couldn't have been any other way. I am, I'm a, have been a great admirer of freedom fighters from all over the country. And I was even more impressed by the, the ultimate effort that was made by the Mau Mau to liberate this country. So obviously when I learned that the government had discovered where he was and they were willing to bring him uh, back to the country, something that the other governments had not uh, tried to do or cared or cared, you know, to, that didn't bother with. I, it was easy for me to become part of the, of the, of, of the effort, part of the stream. And uh, I mean, and for me, it was something that I did with pride because, I mean, General Madenge coming back from Ethiopia, that would have been uh, a great feat, no doubt. Uh, and it was, it was almost like uh, dead and Kimadi coming from the grave, resurrecting. And so why would I be expected to, be, to think any differently from that? I could only congratulate and celebrate and really hope that it was true. The person who was going to meet was Madeng. Koegi admits that doubts began immediately he came into contact with the state guest. No trouble started when we got to the airport because when he arrived with his ent uh, entourage, I, I, was, I, I went right in front. I shook hands and I started looking. Of course, I had not seen him in the, in the Mau Mau days, so I did not know him. But I, well, I was with the people like Paul Ngei, and uh, the wife of Madenge was also there. And I remember um, asking the two of them uh, whether they, they thought this was uh, the uh, Madenge, the lost Madenge. And they said, yes, it is him. But some things disturbed me. Like, he really didn't 
look exactly as I had expected. He looked a little different. He was more of the Somali stock than the Kikuyu stock. And, uh, but again, I, I realized that there are some Kikuyus who have wave hair. His was wavy. And I was asking myself, uh, well, he, I, I asked myself whether geography had so quickly changed his hair. <laughs> or, or maybe I concluded uh, he was one of the few people who develop wave hair even when the general populace around is, is different. The real General Madenge is said to have crossed into Ethiopia around 1955 at the height of the Mau Mau insurgency. His wife Miriam Modoni Madenge, who is over 90 years old now and speaks only in Kikuyu, recalls the day Madenge fled into the bush. This was after the state of emergency was declared in Kenya by the British colonial government. The last time I saw Madenge was in February 1952. He was accompanied by his three friends. He told me to serve them porridge. I started with Madenge, then Gititu, then Keiro. After they were done, Madenge called me aside and told me that it would probably be the last time I saw him, as he was afraid he wouldn't survive the war. So I asked him who would take care of us if he left. He said that things were not going so well and it was possible he could be killed. I gave him my blessings and that was the last time I saw him. He left me with our four children. Mathenge's son Mirugi, now aged 73 years, was only seven years old when his father disappeared into the bush but has a rough idea on the fallout within the rank and file of the Mau Mau. It is said there was a power struggle between Field Marshal Dedan Kimathi and General Stanley Mathenge. Unajua, Mathenge hakuwa mtu ambaye anajua kusoma ama sana, hakuwa mtu ya anajua kusoma sana. Na sasa alikuwa nategemea mtu kama Dedan Kimathi ama kahiga wa shaga kuadika, kuadikea wa beberu balua. Na mara nyingi alikuwa anajiuliza sasa mimi nitapiga na hii fita na mna gani bila elimu alikuwa kwa nazo lakini he was a very good fighter the story has it that they fell out uh, in their leadership of the Mau Mau movement and they split the Mau Mau movement I, I can't I don't think I can say down the middle but at least one part remained Oh, the bigger part remained royal to uh, Kemadi, and the other one split with Madenge. Then it is said that at some point, when he was due to be tried by Kemadi forces, he left with some eight or nine colleagues to Ethiopia. <laughs> Unaona Kenyatta, Raira, nani wanagombana? Hata huku muituni walikuwa kwa hao fiogozi wanagombana. Na kuna wakati waligombana na kemathi. Na wakati waligombana hii kukawa na mbara huku muituni. Sasa kila mtu wakaeda kisi yake. Lakini hiyo siku, siku amanisha ya kwamba hawakuwa wakipigana. Walikuwa kwa badu wanapigana. Sasa kutoka hapo, kuna mze moja nilikutana na ea na eto wa kahinga wa shanga. Unajua kemathi ya likuwa kwa secretary wa movement na mathenge pegine chairman. Sasa wakati mathenge na kemathi wa likuwa sana, kahinga wa shanga akawa secretary ya movement upade ya mathenge. Sasa kemathi ya kuwa kielewa, Kwa ba kuna mtu wabaya na elimu kama yake. Na kahiga wa shaga walikuwa kuna babayangu muituni. Ewa, seka duwa uduo. 
According to his son, the general may have been killed in the forest and never crossed to Ethiopia if what his father's Second World War associate shared with him is anything to go by. So what pushed the Naka administration to tracing the long lost Mau Mau fighter? I think it was the general goodwill of the revolutionary times. I don't know whether I should call them revolutionary. Of, the, of those times which were very much nationalist and geared to righting the wrongs of one party uh, dictatorship, or I mean the wrongs of one party dictatorship. And uh, the injustice done to the Mau Mau was central uh, to that effort. So for me it was natural in fact, I thought that it would be incumbent upon the NAC government and to deal with the past injustices, uh, right the wrongs that had been committed by the colonial government, by the Kenyatta government, and by the Moi government. Because all these governments together had really uh, 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 oppressed the Kenyans in a very bad way, had treated Kenyans badly. Uh, these governments had not paid much attention to sacrifices that some that freedom fighters had paid for us to be able to uh, to be free. And it would have been an injustice for NAC to come to power and to do nothing about these things. <laughs> 